Welcome back to City Health Beat. If you've ever thrown out your back, you know how painful it can be. Every movement and sometimes every breath. Joining us now to discuss the common causes of back pain, along with some of the best treatments, is Dr. Ajay Suman. He is the medical director for the pain clinic at St. Barnabas Hospital. Welcome, Dr. Suman. Thank you for having me. So what are some of the common causes of pain? Um, most people will experience some sort of back pain in their lives, right? Over 90% of people will have some type of back pain at some point in their lives. Mm -hmm. I think the, the important thing to distinguish is how long it lasts. So having back pain for about a week, you can pretty much say that it was muscular pain or, or something, you know, you tweaked your back, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. But when you start to have symptoms more serious, such as numbness or tingling in your legs, even in your arms, if you have problems with your bowel or your bladder control, those are serious symptoms that you need to go see your physician immediately for. Okay, I, I was reading different articles about this. Some things that people say is that, you know, it's about how we sit, our posture, whether we're standing enough. What are some of the causes behind, you know, common back pain? So again, it becomes uh, an individual basis. So mm -hmm. some patients that are construction workers, they're working with heavy equipment and they're drilling all day. They can get a lot of joint disease that develop. Commonly now are information technology or IT jobs where people are hunched over the computer. So now they actually hire people in the office to teach them ergonomic sitting and, and working. Oh. And so sometimes when you're curled over for a long period of time, you can develop muscular pain in your neck and your lower back. So it's important every 10 to 15 minutes to reassess your posture, making sure your lower back is arched, your shoulders are perched back, uh, and your neck is in a, in a nice neutral position. But for some people, there are some serious issues that they have going on. Obviously, that takes testing. Um, what are some of the treatments <coughs> out there to help with, say, herniated disc or stenosis? Well, first, I want to say that if you do feel like you have these symptoms, go to a physician and be evaluated. Mm -hmm. Now, if the physician determines that you have spinal stenosis, a herniated disc, joint disease, these are, there are many treatment options and it depends on the staging of it. Mm -hmm. So I know bulging discs or, or a, a herniated disc is a very common diagnosis given. So I think we can talk about that briefly. Right. So if it's a mild herniated disc, you know, sometimes you go to your physician, you have some lower back pain, tightness, hopefully not much radiation down your leg. Mm -hmm. And you can treat that with medications, stretching, physical therapy, bed rest used to be the treatment of option 30, 40 years ago. We found now that that is a terrible option for Why? treatment. Absolutely not, because uh, it worsens the, the muscle stiffness mm -hmm. and it's the mobilization of your back and your back muscles and stretching of your lower back and keeping mobilized that's going to make you, your muscles stronger long term. When you let those muscles get weak, then you stop using them mm -hmm. and then more of the stress goes on your, your spine, your disc, your joints and your low back. So what you want to do is strengthen all the support systems around your, your spine, your herniated disc and your joints so that they're using less of the stress or they're taking less of the stress. And that's, that's obviously where physical therapy comes in. How um, much has that advanced in terms of treating back pain, um, you know, building up the muscles around the back? Oh yeah, so, so physical therapy, uh, it, it is a first line of defense, in fact, for lower back pain in general. Mm -hmm. when, when pain lasts more than two to three weeks, uh, you get, go to your primary care physician, you get it evaluated to make sure it's not a surgical reason. <clears throat> and then typically they'll send you to physical therapy initially and maybe try some medications out. Now that filters out a lot of patients that allows, patient, that allows specialists like myself to see the patients that still haven't gotten better. Mm. Now physical therapy before and after treatment is great. Sometimes some patients hurt too much, which comes into the next treatment options. Mm -hmm. Typically after medications and physical therapy fail, uh, there are injections that we can do. So inject like epidural? Exactly. And now the epidural is actually an anatomical space, like mm -hmm. the, the, your arm bone or your neck bone. Mm -hmm. uh, this, an epidural is, is a, a space right around the spinal cord, right above it. And that, it's a potential space that we enter mm -hmm. and we can inject medications. And those medications can really treat the nerves that are being affected. So sometimes the, so the herniated disc, so the, the disc is essentially a pillow mm -hmm. between your bones and it acts as a cushion. So when that cushion starts to push out, I always refer to it as a hamburger bun. Uh, when your hamburger patty is a little bigger than the bun and right. it's sticking out, it's a bulge. And when that hamburger patty really starts to stick out more and you start to break off a piece of it, it's, it's a herniated disc and sometimes a sequestered herniated disc. Okay. Now with our medications, it can really start to shrink that disc so that disc isn't pressing on the nerve that's sitting right behind it. Okay, well what about folks who 
haven't had back pain yet, or even people who have had a little bit of back pain here and there, what are things that we can do to preemptively protect our backs? Is there a way that I should be sitting on a daily basis? Any sort of tips you can give to folks? No, absolutely. Well, the first thing I will say, and again, I don't want to sound uh, like a broken record, but definitely go to your physician if you have chronic back pain. Mm -hmm. But just to prevent back disease and, and mm -hmm. back pain in general, even if you look at pro athletes, NFL players, they're resorting to yoga, core strengthening. So again, as you think of your whole upper back and your upper chest, your torso, your head, your neck, everything is supported by your lower back. So to take the stress off of it, if you strengthen your core muscles, if you stretch every day, if you strengthen your lower back muscles, mm. that will take a tremendous amount of stress off of your low back. And that helps out a lot in preventing disease. How much does diet play into this as well? So they have found that people that smoke cigarettes uh, and even ingest uh, large amounts of alcohol, these toxins can build up in your lower back and cause worsening pain. So definitely stop smoking for multiple reasons, but if you have chronic pain, you should definitely not be smoking. Uh, but yes, diet, uh, it's going to indirectly affect it, indirectly affect it, mm -hmm. indirectly obviously with weight. So if the less you weigh, the less stress you have on your lower back. And what sort of additional complications come from allowing back pain to progress, you know? So if, uh, if the disease process is spinal stenosis or a herniated disc, and if there is something pressing on the nerve, I always tell my patients that, you know, within the first three to six months, it's reversible. Mm -hmm. After six months, when you get to a year's time, some of those symptoms may never go away. So what, you, what you're worried about is basically nerve damage. So that's a major complication. But what happens if you don't treat it and your back hurts, you lose mobility. People get worried about bending over in a certain position, so they avoid that position. Then you lose that flexibility, and then you're walking erect sometimes. It's uh, difficult to really be mobile and, and play with your grandchildren or your children. Mm -hmm. It can really affect your daily life. All it, right, it so go and see your physician if, you're, if your plane lasts more than a few days or a few weeks? I would say after two to three weeks, or if you have any symptoms whatsoever of pain radiating down your legs or your arms, uh, and if you're having any problems with your bowel or bladder, uh, I would definitely go to the physician immediately. All right, Dr. Suman, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.